Hey, Devin, welcome to In The Zone. I appreciate great it. Great to man. have you, man. You're having a great season. Appreciate that. I, I was reading on your Twitter that you buddies with The Rock. <laughs> <laughs> not, not buddies. Uh, we're look alikes, is yeah, it? Yeah, I guess, I guess. I went with the turtleneck with the little chain for one of my games since I've been sitting out. And our social media account made a comparison and he responded. So you know, I grew up a Rock fan, so now I responded to him. and. You know, there's a little connection there now. I say he's going to buy you a fanny pack if you win the title. I got to go for that title then. He said <laughs> a personalized one, a personalized one from The Rock. That'd be a big deal to me. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. That's cool. Um, I know you're a huge fan of Kobe Bryant. Right. Uh, we just saw his jerseys retired mm -hmm. recently, both of them. Um, Kobe wrote on your shoes for you, was it last year? Be Legendary? My that was my rookie year. Rookie, rookie yeah. year. Be Legendary. Right. Tell me the story behind that. Um, my security when we were at Kentucky, Robert Lohr, works for the Lakers also. Yeah, yeah. Um, while I was at Kentucky, he always told me, he was like, I love your mindset. You know, you, you remind me of being, you remind me of being. And, you know, I've, I've gotten that comparison from, you know, a mindset standpoint, competitive nature standpoint. But obviously, I wouldn't put myself on that pedestal yet. Yeah. But, you know, I always wanted, to, I always wanted that reputation, you know, that, that dog-like attitude. Every time I'm on the court, I'm a killer. And, Every story you hear about Kobe is that. Yeah, yeah. And so he sat out the first two games we played them that year. Um, but it was his last time at Phoenix, and we knew he was going to play. So I was really excited for that game. Got the extra rest, everything. Woke up, stretch. Don't stretch usually <laughs> in the morning. But, you know, it's a special day playing yeah. against Kobe Bryant. His last year, my first year. Um, so I hit, I hit Robert Laura's like, you know, is there any way I can get some shoes signed from, from him after the game? And he was like, I'll see what I can do. So game ended. We up, ended up winning that game. 1-0 versus Kobe. <laughs> <laughs> 20 right. years you in, but still 1-0. Still 1-0. <laughs> um, but no, uh, Robert Laura came and grabbed me, brought me back to the locker room. Um, instead of signing the shoes, I mean, that was a great part of it, but just getting the chance to speak with him. You know, 10, 15 minutes. You know, he had all the ice bags on, <laughs> shoes in the, in the ice tub. You know, because he was going through it that season, yeah, trying yeah, trying to yeah. perform for everybody. But, you know, just getting the chance to talk to him, he, he, he left me with some, some good things to think about that, you know, I still think about today. Yeah, what, he, what did he tell you? I'd say, you know, just that mindset. You know, for me, he was like, you know, you, you, have, you have everything it takes. Just what is your game going to be? You know, every, in, every night in, every night out. That's what he wanted. He said, what are you going to be? You got to learn. Who you're going against now, you have to study, you know, the top dogs. Then he said, you should be studying Golden State every night. You should be watching their film. And, you know, when it's, hearing that from Kobe, you know, that just, that makes you want to lock in that much more and then be legendary. Yeah. He's, he's basically, to me, I think that is, you're the next one up. That's, that, let's do it. That's, that's how I took yeah, okay, it. So, okay. so every time I'm out there, you know, I want to go in with that, with that mindset. Um, he, uh, the Jersey retirement, a lot of people talking about where he ranks all time. What, what, yeah. you, what do you think? Uh, that's a, that's a tough question. Um, see, it's generation wise for me, you know, it's hard to just do a top five all time because the game was so different yeah, in each yeah, generation, yeah. but for me and the young, I have to do top five for sure. Okay. Just the way that he impacted the game, that he changed the game. People want to look at numbers, efficiency, and all that. I'm throwing all that out the window. He was a dog, five titles. <laughs> you know, Kobe's the man. He, he had an effect on this, on this game of basketball in my life personally that, you know, not many people will ever have. Did he know when you talked to him, did he know you had this reputation for kind of being a similar mentality to him or, or not? I think he did. I think the media uh, brought it by him um, post game before I had the chance to speak okay. with him. I ended up saying that after How the game. How many did you end up scoring that game? Uh, 26, okay. 27. So you had a good I'm game. I'm not sure. Yeah, yeah. Y'all were matched up one-on-one? -on -one? No, 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 no. We, we actually didn't match up much at all. Really? I know I caught it one time in the post against him. I missed a shot. But I shot, I shot his, his, his kind of fadeaway. Okay, okay. And he said something. He was like, that's crazy. You went right to my move. He said, I did the same thing when I played against Jordan for the first time. <laughs> Kobe right. told me that. And, I was like, wow, so there's a picture of it. I missed the shot, but a picture you can't tell I missed the <laughs> shot. So I'm going to hang that picture up. And say you made it. 20 years from now, I made that shot. <laughs> what, what is that like playing? I mean, I don't know if you had posters on your wall, but obviously he was a hero of yours growing up. 
unbelievable. And it, it's crazy, you know, I say it now to, you know, our rookies or our second year players. I had a chance to play against Kobe Bryant, Tim Duncan, Kevin Garnett. <laughs> I'm, I'm a vet now. That's how I feel. So, you know, those are those are legends of the game that I grew up watching. I grew up admiring and, you know, I had a chance to play against the guys in their last year. But it's crazy. I had LeBron on my wall, Kevin Durant on my wall. Yeah. And, now I'm matched up with these guys night in, night out. How did you develop that killer instinct? Because not everybody has that. Yeah. Um, i say I was just born with it, honestly. Um, it just started with, you know, just hating losing. You know, people always say I hate losing more than I like winning. Mm-hmm. And that, that was my mindset. I never liked being bad at anything. If it was ping pong, if it was pool, everything I did with my friends, if I wasn't the best at it, yeah. I had to keep doing it. So. Basketball is that sport that you can't perfect. You know, really? somebody's always going to be better than you at something. So that's the beauty of the sport. That's what keep, keeps people driven. So for me, you know, that, that, that's the love for the game. You know, you, you have to get better every, every time you go out there. You know what's interesting? Because when you think of guys with the killer mindset, you, Kobe, Michael Jordan, not, not putting you yeah. with those guys, but a lot of those guys, all of y'all, they grew up in the suburbs. Mm-hmm. And I, a lot of times people think the game is just inner city. Right. I know your dad moved you to Mississippi to get that toughness. Right. What do you think about it? I mean, you guys are all from the suburbs. Mm-hmm. Even a, a lot of the best players now, Carl Anthony Towns and, and guys like that. What do you think that says about, like, the game isn't as much inner city as, as people think, at I, least nowadays? I think you need a taste of the inner city. Uh, somewhere in your bloodline or somewhere part of your career. You know, I feel like everybody that's played in the suburbs has went to those inner city schools and played a game against it and seen that. And, yeah. and you know, for me, that, that was my move to Mississippi. So do you feel like you had that killer before you went to Mississippi? Because you went your sophomore year in high school, right? Yeah, i say I had the killer, um, but it wasn't on full display yet. You know, I, I feel like it was always in me. Like I said, I always wanted to be the best, but I took it to a whole nother level where, you know, it, it's eat or be eaten <laughs> mentality when I got to Mississippi. So, you know, for me, that kind of changed. Like, I always credit him. I would never say, you know, I was soft or anything like yeah, that. Yeah, but yeah. also being light-skinned, man. You know, you know people, <laughs> yeah, you always got a target on your back being light-skinned. <laughs> so, you know, you, you got to let people know. So what was that like for you culturally to go? Because yeah. Grand Rapids or suburban yeah. Grand Rapids, yes. you were all white environment pretty mm-hmm. much. I guess all black or mostly black yes. in Mississippi. What was that like culturally for you? Uh, it was different. Um, I didn't like it at first. I, mean, I used to call my mom, uh, you know, I'm ready to come back home. <laughs> you know, it was a whole different world for me. But, you know, I couldn't leave that blueprint. When I say blueprint, that was my father. Yeah. You know, he, he, he had all the answers for me. Um, he asked me, is this, is this what you want to do? And then we were just talking about a full ride, uh, full ride scholarship to school. We weren't even thinking about the NBA, so that's what I wanted, yeah. and, and he knew that. So, you know, I, I had to, I had to go through some, through some growing pains down there, but ended up being the best move of my life. Um, now I feel like I'm culturally diverse, I can fit mm-hmm. in in any environment, and you know, I credit that to a lot of my success. Your dad, Melvin Booker, played in the NBA briefly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. When, when were you able to beat him one on one? We've never played one on one. Really? People always ask us that. He'll probably still say he could be one on one. That's the crazy part. He he plays in some uh, in some men's leagues in Phoenix okay. and, and and dominates them. So people. Well, he's are, not that old, right? No, 40, 45. Okay, or yeah, so, yeah. so everybody always comes up to me and is like, "I see where you get your moves from." Everybody around the city of Phoenix, like, "I seen your dad in the gym. You guys play a lot of like." So now he's more post work in the gym, but we've never played one on one. You mentioned the light skin thing. Yeah. It's, it's, talk about that because, you know, I know what you're talking right, about, right, but a lot right, of people right. might not understand that. I mean, people just, I say light skin, people have the perception of just being soft. Yeah. Um, people, people feel like they can punk you. That We say you're not built like that. That's, <laughs> that, that's how we say it. Yeah. And, you know, you're, for me, you're just, you have to let people know from the beginning. And that's, that's why the first impression, you know, right when I got to the league was, you know, I want. I, that can't be your mindset, because once people have that, that title on you, then they're at you. Yeah. Was there ever an incident, whether it was high school, college, or pro, that you had to, somebody challenged you on that, and you had to show, you know, look, or do the guys talk trash about that? I would say when I first moved to Mississippi, you know, going to all-black school, you know, 
then they called me white boy. I was white, I was white boy <laughs> at that school. So, so it, it was a big difference for me from, like you said, in the suburbs, yeah, yeah. being a black kid to going to, you know, <laughs> the inner city school, being a white kid. But, you know, I, I got through it, you know, I was fine. Like I said, you know, my mentality, my mindset just, you know, overrules all that. Man, look, most, of, a lot of, if not most of the best young players coming up now are light skinned. <laughs> That's Y'all true. Y'all ever talk about that? That's true. Carl, Ben Simmons. Yeah. You know, uh, Lonzo. Light skins are taking over, man. <laughs> the dunk contest, right? Oh, Aaron that's Gordon. true. Yep, exactly. Zach, yeah, oh, I, sure. I take pride in that. Oh, I tell sure. dudes, yeah. Steph, Clay. <laughs> We're up there. We're doing our thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, but Kobe Bryant, is he your favorite player all time? Favorite player of all time? I don't know if I can do that growing up a Pistons fan. So yeah, that, 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 that was that, tough for yeah. us. Um, <laughs> but... You know, I, I respect him so much. To, to the highest standard, I respect Kobe Bryant and always will forever. But I always said my favorite player growing up was Rip Hamilton. Oh, you had to yeah. say that from Michigan. No, I, 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 <laughs> I, I used to make a fake mask and play on my little hoop in my room. So, so Rip Hamilton, you know, I, he, he was my favorite player growing up. A big debate is Kobe or LeBron, like the yeah. two best players of this, these generations. Mm -hmm. Who would you take? For what? As the best <laughs> player. See, I, I don't like these questions of compare, <laughs> comparing people. Because um, everybody knows you, you, know, you can't replace Kobe's mindset. You can't replace his, his will to win. But at the same time, you can't disrespect LeBron yeah, and yeah. the complete player that he is. Of getting his play, team involved to being able to score. And now early on, they said you know, he wasn't clutch. Now he yeah. has big shots all the time, too. So, I mean, number-wise, obviously LeBron. but. You know that mentality, and for me personally, I, I feel like I relate more to Kobe Bryant. Okay. Um, so I, I can't pick one, man. Don't 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 do that to me. <laughs> don't do that to me. Um, now you, uh, Jay, Earl Watson, your former coach, he was he was on the in the zone. Recently. I heard about this. Oh, yeah, I heard yeah. about this. Well, he he said that <laughs> uh, you told him you're better than Michael Jordan. <laughs> So uh, give me the story with that. <laughs> Man, me and Earl talked after every practice. There was a lot of conversations, and surprising, that probably isn't the craziest one. Um, he, he says some things also, but, you know, for me, you know, he, he will set the question up. He'd be like, you think you're better than Michael Jordan? And you know how we're raised. You, you, I'm not going to say no. I'm not going to say no. So, yes, I think I was better than Michael Jordan. Um, but when I say that, you know, it's more of a, mindset thing you know never say someone's better than you you know you're gonna work to be the best that's why you play the game to be the best so you know i would, didn't literally mean i'm better than Michael <laughs> jordan in his prime but you know i, I want to be the best at what i do have you seen him since then jordan no i have not okay i have not. you have you met him yeah That's i've a, met him a few okay. times yeah i've met him a few okay. times he probably wasn't as big to you as kobe just because you didn't get to right, see because i jordan. grew up in him for sure yeah. and i'm so young that Honestly, LeBron probably had the most effect on my generation. Yeah. You know, yeah. Kobe was probably like He's five, older. ten. Yeah. So it, it's crazy how that happened. But yeah, not. Nah, I watched a lot of Mike. Watched a lot of film. Do you do you watch a ton of film? Yeah, yeah. And, Especially and Mike, like yeah, other guys for Mike, sure. Okay. Who's the, you watch him more than anybody? You think? Um. No, I watch a lot of Kobe. Okay. I watch Kobe the most. Okay. From a footwork standpoint. Um, and he got his a lot of his from Mike too. Exactly. So. Earl said also that he thinks you can be the best Suns player ever. That's obviously saying a lot. It's probably, I think, Charles Barkley at this point. Uh, what are your feelings on that? That's a big statement. <laughs> Has he ever told Charles you that? Did he ever Steve, tell you that? He, he did tell me that. Okay. Man, Earl was behind me 100%. Um, people don't know the story behind me and Earl. He was my player development first. So when I wasn't playing as a rookie, we used to spend that extra time in the gym. He was telling me then. You know, you're going to be special, oh, you're going to be really special. And then, you know, um, Hornacek got fired. He ended up being the um, head coach, mm -hmm. and he was behind me 100%. He said, I think, you know, the quote Stroud, he said, I know you're going to fail. You know, you're, you're a young player in this league, but, you know, we're going to go through you. And yeah, that's when your numbers start picking up, Exactly. Right? And, you know, it wasn't obviously as efficient then. You know, I was 18, 19 mm -hmm. at the time. Um, then the number one option, so seeing team's best defenders, and like Earl said, you know, it, it was tough for me. You know, I was struggling a lot, um, but he was like, you know, it's going to be better for you in the long run if we go through you now. And, you know, now, you know, the game's slowing down for me. 
Um, and I'm getting better every day. So, you know, I credit Earl for a lot of my success. He said he thinks you can, he could see you playing like a James Harden, right. handling the ball, running the offense, almost like a point. Do mm-hmm. you, is that how you kind of would like to play or? Um, you know, I don't mind it. You know, I, I do it in, in spurts right now. Mm-hmm. I like being off the ball, so okay. too, running off screens. But, you know, that's what the game changed. So you look at the two MVPs last year, uh, Russell Westbrook, yeah. James Harden, they have the ball in their hand a lot, playing in a lot of pick and rolls. And with the, with the passing ability, well, actually with the way they can score, opens up easy uh, yeah. for the passing ability. So, you know, I can see myself doing a little bit of that. You score a 70 against Boston, and Earl mm-hmm. told me, uh, that the coach Brad Stevens wanted him to take you out because you the game was pretty much over. Yeah. Did, were you aware of that? Yeah. Um, the Boston <laughs> Celtics players were upset. The coaching staff was upset. Um, like I said, Earl's behind me 100. percent You know, he wanted to see me succeed, um, and his mindset was the same mindset as ours. You know, if you don't like it, then stop it. Um, yeah. They ended up winning the game. Um, crazy game in my career. I hear about it probably every day now, but. Um, like I said, Earl, Earl wanted to see me succeed. That's that Kobe mentality. For sure. You go for 70. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> you, you, you have to have some type of mentality, just in the zone, honestly. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. All right. I'll, you don't want to answer these. I was going to ask you who's Uh-oh. the best big man in the league. That's not a fa- that's not your position, so they're best, <laughs> you got a best big man in the league? Best big man. Ooh. I'm going to go Carl. College yeah, team. Okay, man. okay. I'm okay. going Carl. But there's, man, there's some good bigs out there. DeMarcus is having a hell of a season. Yeah, yeah. All I the Kentucky right guys. Now, yeah. You like the Kentucky. <laughs> uh, how would the, I mean, the Kentucky team is crazy. If right. you had an all Kentucky team, John Wall, you, Carl Anthony Towns, DeMarcus Cousins, Anthony Davis, how would y'all do against, say, the Warriors? Oh, we beat them. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going. Uh, yeah. I don't know who would beat y'all. That's a heck of a team. Yeah, I like that team right there. That's what, six six and above too. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's a tough team right there. Our bench is bench is solid also. Yeah. Who who else? We got is, Bledsoe. Yeah. Tyler. Gilchrist. It's a lot of. When lot when of you guys. when you went there, did you think? Because obviously you wanted to get to the NBA. Right. And you want to shine. Were you concerned at all about, okay, my number's not going to be as big at Kentucky just because we got so many other guys, too? We were all concerned at first. Really? You know, I never started a game in college. Yeah, that's an example. Yeah. I, I never started a game <laughs> in college. Um, so with our freshman class, me, Tyler Eulis, my teammate now, um, Carl Towns and Trey Lyles, we went in thinking it's going to be our team. Okay. You know, we're thinking Willie Cauley-Stein's about to leave. The Harrison Twins are going to the NBA. So... They all decide to stay. We're like, we're calling coach, like, how's this gonna work? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know, well, now we have yeah. 10, 10 McDonald's All Americans on one team. Um, coach said it's gonna work. He's gonna say, every, he said everybody's gonna eat. So, you know, we, we trusted him. That's where the platoon system started. Yeah. Five people in, five people out. The beginning, none of us liked that either. Um, yeah. You can't catch your rhythm. You're out there two, three minutes, but one group wasn't playing. The other group was headed right in. The re- we call them reinforcements. <laughs> so it ended up working out for all of us. We had four lottery picks that year. Yeah. Um, crazy year. Uh, but Cal wants the best for you. You know, he wants you to go to the NBA. He wants you to succeed. And, you know, that, that was one, another great decision I made in my life. Did you guys ever play freshman versus the upperclassmen? Uh, early on we did. And in the open I'm gyms when we first got freshman there. freshman one. Um, there was battles, honestly. Yeah. You know, we were straight out of high school. Obviously, yeah. we were talented, but they had that years of experience in, in college ahead of us. Um, but there's definitely some battles, some arguments. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of competing in there. Who's the toughest player for you to go against in the NBA? Hmm. I'll say Kevin Durant. Well, you, so you end up guarding him. Yeah, like, I do yeah, sometimes. That, that, I mean, that height, I guess. He's a guard. Right? <laughs> he yeah. plays a three yeah, sometimes. <laughs> He's just he's seven foot playing like a guard, man. He's just so many moves. All his shots are uncontested. Mm-hmm. He's so tall. <laughs> um, he can score at all three levels. Uh, just super talented, man. What do you think about, I mean, you see now with super teams, mm-hmm. you know, he obviously went to Golden State. Right. Before that, LeBron and Wade and Bosch and mm-hmm. Miami. 
Chris Paul goes to jo- join yep. James Harden. What What do you think about that? Like going to join other stars? I think now is something that you have to do. Now that I say the Warriors started it. Um, Just to be able to compete. To be with able to that compete. Team. Um, and that, that's, that's, that's where the games went to. Um, me personally, you know, I, I wouldn't like to do that. I don't plan on doing that. Um, but at the end of the day, everybody wants to win. Mm-hmm. That's why we play the game. And the Warriors set the standard so high where other people had to follow suit. You know, how are we going to figure this out? Yeah. You know, Chris Paul wants to be known as a winner. You know, he wants a championship. That's why you play the game. So I understand the decisions that people are making mm-hmm. now. Um, but I say that Warriors thing changed, changed the NBA. How have you dealt with, I mean, obviously you guys have kind of struggled in your three years mm-hmm. here. How does that impact you to just constant losing and not right. really being in a playoff team? It's tough, man, because if you're in the NBA, you've grown up being the best player mm-hmm. from probably a long time ago. You always probably grew up on a winning team um, like I did. So yeah. I've been a winner most of my career. Went to Kentucky, only lost one game. Um, so for me, it was a total shock. Uh, just losing night in, you can lose five, six, seven, yeah. eight games straight, <laughs> and traveling different cities. You know, you, you can get down on yourself, but you, you just have to find that within you. Yeah. You know, remember why you're playing the game. Remember when you were the kid in the stands that wanted to be on that court so bad. So you know, when we're struggling, you know, Tyson, all our vets always say, you know, you know, remember why you're here, yeah. and that's to get better. Obviously, we have a young team that has to develop. And I think we're on the right path. You know, we have a lot of a young, good young core that, that, that's getting better with experience. What will they have to do, the Suns, to make sure they keep you? I mean, obviously off you to max, which I'm sure they will. But. <laughs> Man, I, I just want to win. Um, and I, I'm sure they do too. You know, everybody in our, in our program wants to win. Mm-hmm. And, you know, that's a lot of responsibility for me too um, that I'm willing to take on. So, you know, whatever I have to do, you know, to turn this thing around, with the young group that we have, get us on the right page and, and start winning. So you like the idea of building, like Michael Jordan, when sure. he went to the Bulls, right. they were a bad team. Right. He built them into a champion. For sure. Yeah. That, that'd be great, you know, especially now losing, being able to win later mm-hmm. in my career, or sooner than later, hopefully. Um, you know, that's, that's what I'm looking forward to. Um, you scored 46 recently against Philadelphia. Mm-hmm. Ben Simmons, Joel Embiid, you outscored both of them combined. Mm-hmm. Somebody, I'm not going to say who, told me that that was a message game from you. That was a statement because obviously they're getting a ton of love. Uh, that, that was a statement. So I know you got the Kobe Bryant ma- mindset, Mamba mentality. So uh, talk about that. I was trying to win the game, man. <laughs> That's it. Whatever I had to do to win the game. <laughs> how, how well do you know them and, and some of the other great young players that are your age? Giannis, I know Carl, obviously. Yeah, but. Well, we know all these guys now. Really? Okay. Um, with AAU, you know, we grew up in, in camp ball together. Uh, like you said, Philly, me and Joe have the same agent, so we see each other a lot. Okay. Um, but, you know, there's a lot of young, talented guys in this, in this league um, that I, I enjoy matching up against. Um, you hear about these guys and you know, they probably hear about me too. So when we match up, you know, we see it as, you know, we're the future of the league. And, you know, I feel like the league's in really good hands. Do you, how do you feel about your, you think your all-star chances are pretty good or you feel like the, the rec team's year, record just hurts um, it? Team record definitely hurts it. I mean, if it, if it was numbers wise, you know, I don't see why not. Yeah. Um, like I said, you know, whatever happens, trying to win, turn this thing around, get some wins, and maybe I can start thinking about that. All right. Well, look, man, I appreciate the I appreciate time. appreciate you. Keep up appreciate the good, you, man. good work, yes, man. Sir. You really got a bright future, and uh, I, I enjoy that. watching you for I sure. I appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah. And you, you nice. represent the light-skinned brothers, too. I got you. All day. <laughs> we need it. For we need sure. It. For sure. <laughs>